think that in spite of the of, um, of the efforts to maintain what we call the liberal order, international order, I think that, that the deep currents are going against it. And I could, uh, I could uh, provide a rationale why this is going to happen. And it's inescapable. And I think what, what, we, 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 could, what we should try to do is to, to, to undertake damage control. I, try to, I think what's happening in, it's happening in Europe, but it's happening also in other parts of, 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 of the global economy is that uh, increasing worries are linked with, um, with um, job losses and people are saying it's, it's because of technology, it's not because of, uh, of global competition, but this is still uh, questionable. The second, and I think is the bigger worry, it's security in many respects, including physical. I mean, the fear of people, of what can happen tomorrow. And um, take the case of, of, of Europe. <laughs> not EU institutions are uh, asked by citizens to come to their rescue. The pressure is on governments. And this is going to continue in the years to come. And if this is the case, and I even imagine a price line with a trade-off between safety and openness. Both are public goods. During hard times, the people value more safety. And here, I think, lies the origin of the inward-looking syndrome, which we see in Europe, but also in other parts of the world. Closing borders, governments being more intrusive, in people's lives, so I, I, I can provide it, but I don't want to continue on this line now. But let me react to some of the comments I heard here. I think that liquidity is never enough. So when, when something hits the global system, then it fades away like water in the sand. It's the liquidity trap, which can operate very, very intensely. Let's not delude ourselves. Secondly, I'm asking myself, because Monsieur, uh, Monsieur Levy Long, uh, he has uh, talked about the ETFs. And I would extrapolate and I would talk about capital markets. And I'm asking myself, when it came to banks, we, the land of last resort function was performed by central banks. Who's going to perform it in capital markets? We, we do have a precedent with the long-term capital management. It was the Fed which brought together the big guys on Wall Street and said, look, we have to do something because if nothing is done, okay, the system might collapse. So, and, and in my view, this is going to happen again. Non-bank actors which provide increasingly Banking services are also pretty dangerous. Now, um, and I would raise the große Fragen, I mean, the big questions, because I think one should put on the plate issues like is the system more simple than it used to be? Because if it's too complex, hard to manage, that, this is more than a pain in the ass. I mean, this, this is a route to to disaster. It's not more simple. We have financial innovation, which con is continuing. Uh, toxic products are put on the market, are used in spite of what we believe to be a more uh, effective uh, regulation and supervision system. And I, the irony is that there, there is pressure to deregulate. I mean, I, I find it, I mean, it's... Uh, Ridiculous. It's happening not only in the United States, and I hope very much that Jamie Dimon and the other people, I mean, it's resisted. But it's happening in Europe. To allow banks, I mean, to, I don't understand why the Vickers reform in the UK is not replicated in Europe. I don't understand why. So then another big question is, 
How much rot is in the balance sheets of banks? I just read the we don't know. 30% of the trading volume in the US. Why, why in Europe? 30% of the trading volume. Governments and banks, central banks, are reluctant to undertake um, the bailing in procedure to apply. That's very dangerous. So it's, it's like we have an ongoing crisis management. We're not coming to, uh, coming to grips with, uh, with um, um, an overwhelming reality. Reality. And then there is another big, an andere große Frage. For whom does the system work? Because you could say, look, we, we reform the system, we'll make it to function better for the benefit of the entire society. Okay. If it doesn't work okay for the benefit, for the benefit of the entire society, but in an even way, even that's acceptable. If we do not face or are, if another crisis is not looming at the horizon, even that is acceptable. We should not hope for perfect evenness. But if we're going to go from one episode to another episode of crisis, although you could argue this is inevitable, this is the way capitalism works, we have to accept it too. But it depends on how the crisis uh, hits and how many people are impacted severely and so on. But, but if the system is perceived by people that it doesn't function for the benefit of most of the citizens, and we see that it's not functioning for the benefit of most of the citizens, then what do we get? Enormous social strain in society. Yeah. Income inequality, but also I mean, the number of losers and pressure put on the political system. Extremist parties coming to power. I mean, this is this is the crux of the matter. It's not about the ETFs and the non-banking actors, which perform banking, uh, provide banking services. The questions, I believe, should go much more profoundly down. And we don't, in my view, we don't have adequate answers. Some, some of the people who used to be at the very top, like Mervyn King, but there are other people too, they even raise <laughs> fundamental questions about not only the architecture, but the logic of banking, fractional reserves, and so on and so on. I mean, we don't want to address these issues. We are afraid of addressing these issues. And if we're afraid of addressing such issues, we'll continue along the same lines. And God forbid, a new episode of crisis hitting us, what's going to happen? Nationalize the whole banking sector? It might happen. This might happen with a new episode of big crisis. So with all due respect, it's not only about the ETFs or where the crisis will come from. It's about what next? Can we intervene? What are the tools? And the, the anger and the fury of people. I think these are the questions which we do not address. I mean, it's uh, properly current. Now, in operational terms, uh, does this mean uh, that the die is cast and we're just along for the ride? Does it mean that central banks should be quickly withdrawing their current uh, support for uh, financial markets? I, 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 I believe that the BIS, I think the BIS underestimates uh, the power and the effectiveness of uh, macroprudential tools. We did have capital controls years ago, decades ago. I believe that they were effective. I think we succumbed to an ideology that we, sh we should have uh, completely free uh, financial markets because that's the way to make the system function extraordinarily well. And that was bullshit, bullshit. Because those who were pragmatic, that, was, that philosophy was espoused by the IMF, that was imposed on Asia. I mean, th those, the Asian economies were collapsing and Monsieur Camdesu was suggesting to people in 1997, 1998 to continue with opening the financial markets. I mean, 
This is what I mean. We should not be blindfolded. We should ask the right questions because otherwise we're going to be overwhelmed by events. And, 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 and I think the, the, the BIS, I think, is right that we should not continue to pour money into the system of liquidity. But I think the, the, the BIS underestimates the power of capital controls. I think we should rethink. Uh, no, I think we should re-energize the Bretton Woods arrangements logic. We need. Because you, you mentioned, Mr. Budu, you mentioned the need for the EU to work together with Americans, with the, Jap with, with the Japanese, and the, and the Chinese. The Bretton Woods arrangement were policy coordination in action, clearly, with a, a clear logic. But we don't want. You know what's the mantra? And I heard it in the IMF. There is no way to have policy coordination. There is no way. I mean, if you, if you start with the working assumption that there is no way to have policy coordination, you don't, you're not going to get it. What shall we wait for? For ast asteroids to hit planet Earth or aliens to come and to force us to work together? I mean, I mean this is the sheer, I don't know how to call it, but I, 